Well, hi there. Good to see you. Welcome to the porch after dark. I am Red Dirt Preacher, also known as Lenny, your best friend. We're gonna be best friends. I'm gonna make this one a little bit of a warm up because it's late at night, and a lot of you are like, it's quiet in your house, and now it's really loud because Red Dirt Preacher is talking. Shh. Um, this one is a little bit about assumptions. It's gonna be fun in just a couple minutes here. Living personal experience, man, I'll tell you, one of my biggest triggers, trigger, 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 is literally when people assume, when they assume stuff, and that happens to me all the time. One of the things that happen is the word preacher. The moment I do or don't say that I'm a preacher, prophet, messenger for God, running a church, whatever, whatever. If it goes down that avenue, there's a massive assumption right off the bat. That happens because when people find out they're hanging out with a preacher, it's like the moment you find out you're driving in traffic and there's a cop three three paces back, you start driving differently. Okay, so when you know when friends or people or newbies come into my life, they realize that I'm a preacher. They're like, oh, gotta, oh, well, let me tell you that you know I'm atheist and I used to be Catholic and I I, I smoke and and I have a girlfriend. I don't care. It's cool. So it's funny because people assume when I tell them I'm a preacher that they have to like drive right behind me. I would like to have authentic authenticity around me. So it's best if I if I don't say, you know, that I'm a preacher because then people tend to be more authentic in the room. So um, assumptions gone wrong, and you know, you're a preacher. You're a girl. Oh my. Oh, is yeah. News flash. <laughs> so there's assumptions based on that. Another one that I totally hate is this whole pretty girl face that I have. It has done nothing but damn me in my entire life. It's what got my heart broke. It's what's gotten me deceived. It's what's gotten me betrayed, used, chewed up, spit out, orphaned, and hashtag me too My face has not done me any damn favors at all besides betray and damn me. And I mean that by I was born this way, okay? And, and you know, and uh, I'm not trying to be very humble about it, but... You know, it's the whole, like, pretty girl crap I've gotten my whole life. I'm sorry, it's just my face. It's my face. I got large pores that you can't see unless you were sitting here with me like, damn, lady. You know, I got crooked teeth. I can't grow tits or teeth or, or plants, you know? That's the way the Lord made me. You can laugh. It's okay. It's, it's okay to laugh around here. That's why this church is different, and that's why I'm different. Uh, boom, boom. Are you alive out there? So, uh, assumptions go as far as, like, um... You know, uh, when real things happen to me, um, I get blamed for the whole Jezebel thing. Just because I happen to be pretty. Like, I'm after all your husbands because I'm a Jezebel. You know, and they do that assumption bullshit uh, uh, on the whole pretty face thing. You know, it's I hate it and it's done nothing but damn me and get me completely misunderstood and mislabeled most of my adult life. So assumptions, assumptions. The next one people do is I keep friends that are like 20, 25 years older than me. I date people that are 20, 25 years. I have cars. That are, I like old shit. You know, Miranda Lambert put out a song a couple years back. It's called Old Shit. You should check it out. Um, you know, that's just me. I like old metal. I like old cars. I like, I, I um, you know, hey, bring it on. I love the moon and the ocean. That is ancient, archaic stuff. I love Jesus. Ancient, archaic. I love old stuff. So, um, my friends are older than me, enough to be, you know, nabbed as my father, you know, I've got three young kids, I've got 12 and 11 and 8 year olds, so when I'm running around with my friend and my best friend and my business partner, you know, my, you know, it's as if they're, that's the grandfather. Can't tell you how many times I went out to dinner or went places, you know, with the group, the trio, and, and sometimes my ex is included, you know, so it's a happy family we have, and. It's great because we'll go out and, and if the assumption is that the ex-husband, you know, is my husband and the assumption is, is that the elder gentleman who is my best friend and business partner is now going to be grandpa. And it's so cool to bust people's chops in, 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 in restaurants and tell them the truth. Like, I wouldn't assume that if I were you. You know, today, in fact, I was looking at a house to buy in Georgia and we get out of the car and... Uh, you know, me and my, my business partner, my best friend, we're, we're checking the house out. My ex is kind of, my ex-husband goes around back to kind of look at things. And the realtor gets out of his truck and he's like, uh, can I help you, ma'am? And I'm like, yeah, uh, I'm the one that's buying the house. <laughs> you know, he was already following the male steed, you know, he was already fine. He was already like financially, uh, assuming, you know, I'm, I'm going to follow the males. Hi, I'm, I'm Laney. I'm the one buying the house. <laughs> nice assumption, dude. So he's like, well, if you're looking for, if your husband went that way and your father went that way, 
<laughs> and I about laughed, and I got to bust the guy's chops. Like, no, that's my ex-husband, and that is my dearest and best friend. Ching, ching. Where's the front door? <laughs> Can we cut the price on the house? You know, so no assumptions. And the other thing that people do is, to me, is... Um, I kind of wrote a little notes here, a little, little notes here. Um, oh, yes. So you guys know that um, a couple months ago, I fell into God love and ended up buying a, a 1955 Buick Roadster. And it was by accident, and it's, it, it's a gift. It's a gift, man. It's like, dude, I've been on a seven-year journey through the rabbit hole. I've been changing. I've been doing the work. I've been healing. I've been, you know... Creating my union with G. I've been doing me. I've been healing me. I've been rocking me. You know, Twin Flame said, whoa, you know, so I've been working on me. I've been on this holy journey with you guys too. And, and I'm doing doing my stuff. And what's, what's neat is, is this car, this 55 Buick, you know, it came into my life like kind of when I was graduating some stuff, spiritually speaking, and then boop, here's this car out of the universe's butt. So I thought, wow, Jesus loves me. It's tailor-made. I love blue. I love old cars. That thing's old metal throughout. Jesus knew his girl. Jesus knew his girl. So I love this car. The reason I bring this up is the another assumption that happens. When I'm cruising with this car, got my hair up in a clippy, you know, it's hot and sweaty in there. There's no air conditioning. You put the vent on winter, and all that does is close the flaps. If you put the vents on summer, it opens the flaps. The faster you go, the more wind you get. You know, so that's the way the AC is in the 55. There is no AC. And it's all glass, and it's all metal. So when you stick your arm out the window, you get like a 90 degree burn. Ow, it hurt. It gets hot in the car. So it might look fun driving on the road, but I am one sticky situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like a bank heist. Anyway, so I start, it's funny because sometimes I'll come cruising up to a light and I don't do the look around. Like, who's looking at me? I really, my car is a hands-on machine, okay? It looks great, but it tic-tacs, makes some noise. And you got to hold things at the same, you got to be paying attention. My car right now is, is a daily driver. It's an all-hands-on-deck kind of car. You cannot be messing around, you know? Um, anyway, so when I pull up, I'm, and I'm still real scared of it. I've only had it for a couple of months, you know, and it sways. and So it does all of its things. So as me and this car are dancing down the road, sometimes I notice that there'll be female drivers slightly primping and looking back as if to try to, you know, to get my attention. It's funny because a few times already, the whole male, female, you know, with my hair up in a clip and I'm in a car, they assume that I'm male. So when we get to the red light, there's literally this girl pulling up next to me like, hey, hi, oh, and you can see them get embarrassed because they realize that I'm just as feminine as them, all right? So they, like, roll up the window, <laughs> you know, act like they're rest of the radio. I saw that assumption. Your assumption is, eh, wrong. So we'll just keep going because it's kind of fun to turn them out. Um, the other thing is, is I own and operate my own business with a great counterpart and friend and a mentor who came into my life and onto my spiritual path um, in divine timing. And he's my best friend, and he's my mentor and teacher, and the one I speak of a lot. And he, through him, I have been apprenticed and, and, and learning to be a carpenter and do carpenter carpentry things, like my great dad upstairs. I just love I love woodwork. I have since I was a kid. And here comes this great gentlemanly, chivalry, awesome, unconditional love, rooted, healthy person, where I can actually learn carpentry and get a best friend. So that's amazing, and that's been happening over the last five years. So when I moved to Georgia from Oklahoma, born and bred. I miss the state, not the broken hearts and plows that I left there. Amen. So I'm in Georgia starting new tomorrows, growing new peaches. Um, when I got here, COVID hit, and then I started my own business with him. 50-50, it felt good. I'm, I'm a woman. I'm healing my ATM chakra, so I'm making my own money in the world. I'm securing. I'm interdependent, not codependent. It was just me all singing a song, working out. So we start building porches. And what's cool is I had a tool belt, and I've got like the tape messenger, you know, and measure. I can talk. You guys know me. And so I, I'm kind of a, you know, getting my skills, trades on for many years type of carpenter. I also run this business. So it is me, the talking head, or if not my, car, my, my partner, who is the talking head. We collect checks. We collect the signed uh, agreements. We, we press on schedules. We, we do networking with the family. We, we, we do a lot of things. More than half of that job is mine to do. And I remember not too long ago, we were putting a 3A-frame porch on the back of this huge house. 
And uh, I went to the front door to request payment from the female. And uh, my friend and counterpart had already requested payment from the male head of the family who said, I have to talk to my wife. One of those guys, right? So I waited till the afternoon. The wife is home. I figured I'm female. She's female. I own the business. I'm going to go ask for that darn money. And, and, and company, you know, they signed a contract and there was some money due up front at the signing of the contract, which they indicated to pay for like two or three days. That's what I was after. So I, I knock on the door. The woman opens the door and literally looks me up and down and gives me this like this, like already this demeaning scoff, you know, like, uh. She did not appreciate my energy even standing on the welcome mat. So I reminded her, hey, I'm lady, it's perfect out here. We talked the other day. Time to pay up. Well, I have to talk to my husband. Oh, good Lord, run around we go. So anyway, I told her it was imperative that we that she pay the bill. And it's 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, I'm only working till 5. That's three more hours. My guys are already have, have peeled apart most of your deck wood and exposed. They're already digging holes for the post. Work's being done. Pay up, woman. She shuts the door in my face. Literally. I'm a grown woman, and she literally kind of just politely but not politely, I have to talk to my husband, awkward weirdness, didn't validate me, and shut the door. Huh. My selfie self knows that she's going out back, I bet, to chase down the guy with salt and pepper hair, who is my business partner, because that's the dad of the situation. She doesn't want to deal with the young one. She wants to go outside and talk to the man, which I found, that's offensive. I own this business. I created this business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was my baby, my brainchild. I advertise for it. I get the jobs for it. I do the phone calling. I do the measuring. Come on, I do the digging of the holes. So I go around back. And she is talking to my business partner, so I let that go. About five minutes later, she sends out her 14-year-old son with an envelope that's got my buddy's name on it, nice and big and permanent marker. And the boy hands my buddy the payment. And I thought, well, that chick's got a real problem with me. This is fun. So anyway, um, the assumption that I don't belong on the porch, the assumption that I don't belong as a carpenter, the assumption that I don't belong owning my own business, the assumption, assumption, assumption that there always has to be, um, you know, a male figure, a swinging dick. Yep, I said it. Behind a woman, women are waking up now on a spiritual journey path where they are not to do this. We're not to be leaning on other men's um, literal parts here for security. We Women are, if you guys didn't know this, Women are being called on their spiritual journeys with Christ to create their own stability and security and not ride the ATM mule of a man. You understand? Okay, women can are free to make their own choices and they don't feel like they're, they're pressured or pretzeled into things. Um, because it's, it's, AJ, it's a thousand years old. You know what I mean? Women can't take care of themselves. They must be chaperoned. You know, you'll be married off at 20. And if that doesn't work, I'll put you in a straight jacket and send you down up to, you know, send you to New York, upstate New York. <laughs> you know, women were, uh, we were kind of really, really taught for a thousand years down deep to our bone marrow that we really ain't crap unless we're chaperoned by a man. We can't do anything unless there's a man behind us. And we've taken offense to that. And it's come out in weird ways. We burn our bras and it kind of got twisty. God's really wanting women just to come up a little higher and not uh, be so weak in those chakras and be so weak in the left or right brain. He wants our left and right brain to get strong together and come into union. That makes you, you, you a whole person. You know what I'm saying? So when I got my money jiving, and I'm not only just working my butt off and making money, okay, we're running a treadmill, what I'm actually doing in God is creating wealth, currency. That's lasting longer than money. Currency's gonna buy, currency's like love. Currency will, will buy all over the world, whereas money doesn't. Money comes and goes. Currency sticks and stays. And, um, Ooh, got off on a little red dirt road there. Um, but I was talking about how, how people assume that I can't be. And I didn't pick porch building because I wanted to be a man. I can't. I'm made to be a woman. And I got my own divine glory to sit in. If I was going to try to be a man, I would only be a half-ass man at best. Believe me. Okay? So I do porch work because when I was a little kid, the best man I've ever known that, that, tra that, just good love, good love, my great granddaddy, and his name was Arnold Bates, and, um, everybody called him A.W., anyway, he was a great, he was a legendary man in my book, and, um, I take after him physically, and I, rem I, I love him, and he's around me all the time, and he's the one that did woodwork, I love the things he made, and I think it's amazing to take a piece of wood, and go make something, uh, make, uh, I think it's awesome, so I, when I was a kid, I always wanted to do that, 
I just never stopped to learn it from my grandpa. So now that it's come back around in the form of a different meat suit, different person, I still get a loving carpenter to teach me what I always wanted to learn. And now I'm smart enough with enough cognitive awareness to stop and learn. And I, so that's why I do the porches. And yeah, so there's just small assumptions there. Assuming, don't assume. Hey, check this out too. The other day, let me get one more in here. I was telling you about the 55 for a reason. Uh, not only the girls stopping to like check me out at a red light and then figure out I'm a girl and go, oh, you're assuming. This happened the other day. I actually went, I actually took the 55 to the first little local cruise in with my kids. We went to Steak and Shake. We got some milkshakes, had some fries. And by the time I got there, the parking lot was like VFW was sponsored by Summit Racing. You know what I mean? There's all these old dinosaur men with like all these shiny cars, right? So I come cruising, bebopping in with my kids all loaded in the back and, and my best buddy by my side. So we pull up and I'm literally driving the car. I'm driving it, which usually means I own it. So we, uh, I, I go to park and before I start to slow down and kind of get her, put her in park. The moment I put the car in park, there's like a, like a little pack of menlets that are coming over here, okay? And they don't come to the driver's side. They, they wait and pause, and you can tell they're a little shifty about it. And then they go to my buddy's side of the car. He barely gets the car open, and it gets out, and it's like a celebrity moment. They're asking questions, pop the hood, what year is it, what you got under the hood, da da da, da. I know all the answers to these questions. This is my car. Like, I've been doing the work with, you know, come on. Really? So I'm literally standing on the other side of the car with my keys in my hand, feeling like a noob, which is how the lady at the porch made me feel, like a noob. You know, like, I'm not even standing here. Hello. So anyway, I thought it was assumingly hilarious that most of these men went over to the other man who's got salt and pepper in his hair. Must be his car. You know what I'm saying? So I like breaking these paradigms and, and being outside of expect Like, that's not what you expected, huh? License plate says, preacher, gig on that. Unexpected, unexpected, unexpected. You know, stay out. Don't assume. So it is really my trigger point to assume. Don't assume because you never know what you're walking up on. <laughs> anyway, that was my two-cycle oil. If you guys know me, I like to parlay a lot of metaphors to car parts and small engines. So that was my two-cycle oil. That was my little warm-up. Um... Anyway, I'm feeling good in the spirit now, so I'm going to get some coffee. It didn't beep, but uh, it's almost done. And then I think I'll come back here, see what else we can dig up in the glory of the dirt, you know? Anyway, it's great to see you guys. I love staying up with you. Insomnia bites us both. And uh, stay kind and stay out of your mind.